Uh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's, uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Ivory Telecast, and I'm very grateful that you're here, okay? Um, you can reach the ministry by calling 475-300-3850. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the Word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475 300 Five zero twenty four hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, Street and Irish Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. This Coleman, Jr. This is starting a series, this right here, and this is the first part and the first broadcast of a series entitled the doctrine of the trinity and it's very important that you take notes it's very important that you allow the lord to minister to you 
through this so that way you can um, it would encourage your spiritual walk and help you to accomplish the things that the Holy Ghost has uh, for you to accomplish now before we touch anything let's have a word of prayer Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you this early morning hour. Lord, some of us, you have just woken up. Some of us, you have not allowed to sleep yet. At any rate, we ask you to forgive us for all of our sins and our shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. We thank you for allowing us to get the jump on the devil and that as our businesses, most businesses are closed this weekend, and this is considered a weekend and not a business day, that gives us the opportunity to spend time with you and talk with you and ask you for your strategy concerning the things that we face this coming week. A lot of us are facing many, many different things. And we ask in Jesus' name that you let us not alone, but that your presence be with us and go with us that we may know that you are mindful of us, that we might see you move and give you the glory, the thanks, and the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, I ask that you allow me to decrease, I must decrease, ha. that you may increase. You do the teaching, you do the ministering, you do the feeding, and minister to me also, even as you speak through me. I thank you for being God. Thank you for all that you have done, are doing, and will do, not just in my life, but in the life of my brethren. Also, bless those that you use to support the ministry, those that allow you to use them to sow into the, the work of the ministry. Bless them. And those that shut their hand, I ask, Lord, that that be between you and them. I just thank you. And please, Lord, fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and give me a spiritual understanding of your word. And speak through me. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We pray. Please answer questions that your children have. Raise questions. Answer questions. Confirm some things. Ha! Oh, glory. Please, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We pray. Amen. 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 I'd like to ask you to turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. This is going to be a very, very powerful conversation that we're going to have. And again, as the Lord led me to say a minute ago, this is part one of the broadcast of the series entitled The Doctrine of the Trinity. Now, we know that the word Trinity is not in Scripture, is not in the Bible, yet neither is the word Bible, but the Bible exists, and so does the truth of the Trinity, and we're getting ready to see that. We're going to tackle this, and it's going to be passionate, it's going to be intense, and it is going to be a blessing unto you, and I pray earnestly that you have a pad and a pen or a pencil and take notes jot this down don't take my word for anything follow me as the lord blesses me to walk through the scripture as we walk through it together okay okay now what we're going to do is we're going to read clips of scripture and then we're going to have our conversation genesis chapter one let's notice Verse 1, and I'm coming out of the King James Version. Scripture says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now let's jump to verse 26. We're going to read verses 26 through 28, and this is still in chapter 1 of Genesis. And in the description there, uh, as the Lord will touch your heart, there is a link to the ministry's website where you can allow God to use you to sow into the ministry to help us with, with projects that the Lord have in our spirit to do, even concerning helping people or just anything dealing with ministry. There's, there's ministry things that God have us doing, and uh, it would be a blessing if you let God use you to put your hand into it and partner with us, okay? The description is there. Um, the link is there in the description. God bless you. Verse 26 of chapter 1. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply. And replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now let's go to chapter 3 and let's notice verses 22 through 24. Verse 22, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword, which turned every way, to keep the way of the tree of life. Now let's dash over to Genesis chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 8 through 13. Verse 8 says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now let's notice Genesis chapter 11. And we're going to read verses 1 through 8. And then we're going to tackle this. Verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. 
and they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there conf confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's say our grace. Father, again, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for our shortcomings. Forgive us for our faults. And forgive us for our wrongs. And please, Father, minister to us. Minister your word to us. Oh, just talk to us. Just talk to us. Bless us to be able to start our day correctly and right with you and your word in our hearts all day today please father in jesus name again you do the teaching i must decrease that you may increase i have to scripture says so father you do the teaching in jesus name we thank you and we pray amen Let's go back to Genesis 1. Now, as some of you may have already picked up, we have two cameras going. One for television. One for Facebook Live. So those of you on Facebook, I pray that you enjoy this information. And even those of you on television, no matter where you're watching from. God bless you. In God's infinite wisdom, he has done many things to prove his sovereignty. He's done many things to prove that he and he alone is God. And he Help me, Holy Ghost, and lead me in this teaching, please. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. He has made it so that we have to consult him about everything in this life. Okay, Lord, I hear you. But the thing is, being able to reach him. As we just read in Genesis chapter 11, as we just read, <laughs> these people said in verse 4, go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth so man just didn't start trying to have their 15 minutes of fame they've been doing this a very long time 
since the beginning of time. Since the fall, actually. At the fall, actually. Man and woman have been trying to do things their way and not God's way. Okay, fast forward down to 2019. This country, the shape this country is in. And everyone is complaining. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has something to say about this or that. If it's not the weather, it's the economy. If it's not the economy, it's a relationship. If it's not the relationship, it's their children. If it's not their children, then it's their job. Man has something to say about everything God said why not come to him I'm led now to repeat the thought that God gave me this is part one of a series entitled the doctrine of the Trinity the title of this, I asked God, well, Lord, what is the title? What do you want to say to your people? What, what do you want to get across to them? God said, the title is me, myself, and I, and you. <laughs> now, you might wonder what, what, what is apostle saying? No, it's not me. It's what God told me that the title was. Him, himself, and him. The Trinity. Three in one. And you. And you. And me. In other words, God want us to build a relationship with him, but he desires that we learn who he is. Huh. So we can have fellowship with him. Oh, fellowship with God. Something that Adam and Eve was blessed with and forfeited. Fellowship with God. One of the things that is important to understand is if you want to learn who God is, it is also good first to know who God is not. Now, he is not Allah. He is not Louis Farrakhan. He's not a five percenter. Some of y'all know what that is. He's not who the Jehovah Witnesses say he is. He's not who the Mormons say he is. He's not who the Masons and the Eastern Stars say he is. He is not who the Indians or the fraternities or other secret societies say he is. He's not who the Sabbatarians say he is. He is not who the Christian scientist says he is. He's not. When we read the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, 2, 3, twice in verse 4, verse 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, twice in verse 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 20, twice in 21, 22, 24, twice in 25, Verse 26, twice in 27, and twice in 28, we see the word God. God. So we are under the impression 
<laughs> that we serve someone named God. And because of this, the enemy himself is a trickster and good at deceiving people with words. He approached Eve in Genesis chapter 3 and in verse 4, he just walked up to the woman using the body of a serpent and he said, not verse 4, but verse 1, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. He approached her with the question to see where she is. What does she know? He's an opportunist and a daredevil. Yes, that's that's one of his descriptions. And he's willing to take a risk to find out what we know about the one that we call God. Because if he can throw us off, that's his first step in robbing us of what God intends for us to have. Jesus said in John chapter 10 when he was teaching on demonology and on the doctrine of the son he said in verse 10 well actually in verse 9 he says I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. That's the doctrine of the Son. The Son of God. Then he said, in verse 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal, comma, and to kill, comma, and to destroy. Then he said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. They might have life. The zoe life of God. And it more abundantly. He wants us while we're here in the earth realm to be able to enjoy life as well as enjoying a relationship with him. But the enemy is jealous of the opportunity that we have to enjoy what he lost. What he lost. What he lost when God made man. I'm just going to throw this out there and put it on the table. Some of you know this and some of you don't. Between verses 1 and 2 of Genesis chapter 1 is where the fall of Lucifer happened. When God began to recreate, verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, that word was there, was, and the earth was without form, is telling you it's a continuation of something. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created something. There was some substance there. Verse 2, and the earth was, out, was without form. Now there was no substance. And void, meaning now it was empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, meaning now there was judgment. Darkness, condemnation. 
And God said, let there be light. Now he starts recreating. And some of you might challenge that and say, well, how do we know that that's true? Well, if you jump down to verse 28, it says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, talking about mankind, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Control it. Dominate it. Keep it in check. Plenish means to fill. Replenish means to refill. If I drink out of my cup and it's gone and I ask someone, will you replenish my drink? That means would you refill it? The enemy is good for challenging us at what we know. So, being that, the Bible starts off with, in the beginning, God created the heavens, three heavens, and the earth. So, many other religions and beliefs and disciples and followers and false prophets and false apostles and, 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 and teachers and so forth of other religions, they say there's only one God. And we all serve this one God. Some people in other religions will try to avoid a theological discussion with someone that's learned and they would simply say, I just follow God. And if you don't know, if you don't know who God is, then you will not be able to defend the gospel nor to give man a reason for your hope. Another thing that's important to know is that the Old Testament was translated from Hebrew into English. And the New Testament was translated from Greek into English. The reason the Old Testament was translated from Hebrew into English is because Hebrew was a language of the heart. Most of you know that when you really are going through a trial or a crisis and you really need to reach God, you might grab the scriptures and go into the Psalms, the Old Testament. Some of you might read uh, prophetic books of the Old Testament for comfort, for encouragement, for information. A language of the heart. Not to mention the, the Hebrews, the Jews, they also were very expressive with their hands. Now, in the New Testament, as we study that, the Greek language was a language of the mind. So you had the Greek language, which is a language of the mind, which is why the scriptures are called epistles. The New Testament is teaching. Oh, it is teaching left and right. And the Old Testament, again, is a language of the heart, the Hebrew. So in the Old Testament, you, you develop a relationship with God. And in the New Testament, if you keep reading, you begin to learn more about this God that you have developed an intimate, spiritual relationship with. So, when we look at that first verse in Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the English, it says God, 
But for those of you that study and have a piece of a library or an extensive library, if you look up the word God in your resources or your Strong's or your other reference books, every time you come across this word in the scripture, oh, glory to God, uh, you will learn something else about the God that you serve. You will learn about his character. Okay, hold that for a minute. Now, some of you might even challenge that. But notice something. And I ask this question because the Holy Ghost is leading me to. How many of you brethren that are watching this broadcast or listening to it by CD or cassette or watching on VCR or on television or uh, on Facebook or on YouTube. How many of you, when you're at Bible study or when you're at the place of worship you go to, how many of you see the minister start reading from Genesis 1 when they do and then get down to verse 6 and say, and God said, let us make man in our image. God said. And that how many of you see the leader explain why God said, let us. Very important key. Because we serve a God who though he is one God, uh-oh. He is a three in one God. Now, Scripture says in the book of Isaiah, I'm still going to challenge you because I'm led to. In the book of Isaiah, and I believe it's chapter 45, here we go. Let's look at verse 21. Here's what God said. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Go back up to verse 18, Isaiah 45. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. God says. Now, <laughs> in the book of John, chapter 17, notice what the Lord Jesus Christ said. Verse 1, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now the Jehovah Witness, they use verse 3 to prove that Jesus 
Christ and God the Father are two separate individuals and that Jesus was in heaven sitting next to God but God said in the book of Isaiah 45 verse 18 for thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. Some of you are saying, okay, apostle, I, I don't get it. What, what are you saying? I'm not saying nothing. I'm reading the scripture to you. In Genesis 1 and 1, again, the confirmation is, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, brethren, if you jump way over to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 God said it says but unto the son he saith unto the son God said thy throne O God is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Yet, God said, in Isaiah 45, verse 18, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. So now we have what appears to be a contradiction. But it's not. Is not at all. And I hear the Lord saying to go here so that that way you won't be totally surprised. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3, it's very important. Very important. Verse 16, the Bible says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Then it says, God was manifest in the flesh. Manifest means made to appear. God was made to appear in the flesh. Justified, meaning he was made right. That body, the flesh, was made right by the Holy Ghost, it says, justified in the spirit, capital S, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, God was, manifest in the flesh, <laughs> and seen of angels, they watched God carry out this mystery of godliness. We'll talk about that in a minute. Preached unto the Gentiles. God was preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world and received up into glory. So now the scripture is telling us that God came down here. He did some things and went back up into glory. In the book of John chapter 3. And we're coming back to that first Timothy. In John chapter 3, when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, in verse 13, he says that no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So here's Jesus talking about being omnipresent. Omnipresent. In John chapter 14, Verse 1, Jesus said, 
Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. He's telling you, he's telling me, he's telling us, you believe in God, believe also in me. Wow. That's deep. That's making himself of equal importance with God. So now let's recap real, real quick. We have God saying in Isaiah that there's no one beside him in heaven. We have him saying in chapter 45 that he created everything. But then we see in Hebrews chapter 1 that he proves that Jesus has a, a higher name than the angels and he's telling Jesus, you made everything. But then in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, God said, in the beginning God created the heavens <laughs> and the earth. Hmm. Let's slide back to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God. In the Hebrew dictionary, the word that's used in those verses that the Lord led me to mention a minute ago are those verses from 1 through 28. The word is not God in the Hebrew. What it is is Elohim. And Elohim is the plural word of Eloah. Which Eloah means a deity, small d, or the deity, capital D. It was the Hebrew name for God. Eloah. Now, this name Eloah corresponds to the Aramaic Elah, which means God, capital G. Now, Elohim being plural, thus is defined as meaning gods in the ordinary sense. But specifically, it's use of the supreme God. So though Elohim is used 2,606 times in the Old Testament, 2,346 times it means God, capital G, small O D, or capital G, small D, no vowels in the Hebrew. And one time it means God, capital G, capital O, capital D, or when you take out the vowel, capital G, capital D. Powerful. Now, that explains why in verse 26, God would say, let us. Okay, now let's jump up a notch. And I'm going to talk to you as though you are in the theology class of not just this ministry or just a student of theology, period. Theologically, God was talking to himself. Wait a minute. Don't say, wait a minute. He said, God crazy? No. But... In the book of Isaiah, let me run back over there for a minute. Chapter 55, verse 8, God said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, me, myself. And I. <laughs> now, okay, the Holy Ghost said, go further. Verse 10, for as the rain cometh down 
and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh to bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Look at verse 11. So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So we have people reading that verse, and they take it lightly and say, God's spoken word. Amen. But in John chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. That's the logos. The, the expression. The spoken Word. The written Word. The computation. The thought of God. That was the Logos, the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. <laughs> As we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, now that gives Isaiah 55 verse 11 a deeper meaning because God says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. And if you remember... In the book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. In the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 50, says Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up. The ghost. He yielded up the ghost. Glory. Glory. <laughs> Glory. Glory. In the book of Luke. Chapter 23, verse 46, Scripture says that when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. In the book of John. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is so powerful. In verse, in chapter 19, verse 30, the Bible says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. God said, Isaiah 55 verse 11 So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth It shall not return unto me void But it shall accomplish that which I please And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it First John Chapter 3 Verse Eight, the Bible says, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose. Mm. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works <laughs> of the devil. For this reason, he might destroy the works of 
the devil. Very important. The God that we serve, God the Father, planned everything. The computation of God, the thought of God. He knew that the enemy was going to try to throw his hand and stuff and mess up what God intended. So God, with his omniscient, infinite wisdom, knew what angels were going to do what. Now, I, we're jumping up a, a little bit higher now. I'm going to talk as the Holy Ghost is leading me right now. Again, as though we are theologians and, and, and that we're studying the things of God. God knew what was going to happen. So what he did is he put a plan of godliness into existence before the foundations of the earth were laid. There had to be a lamb slain. Salvation, atonement comes by. Shed blood. Salvation comes through a man. That's for those of you that study on a deep level. Salvation comes through a man. Every time God rescued Israel in scripture, he did it through a male. Because he made the male gender to be dominant. Even when Deborah was over Israel as the judge, when it came time for Israel to do battle, she called Barak who was a prophet as well. And she said to him, you know that they're going to say that a woman won this battle. I'm paraphrasing it. And he said, that's cool with me. Because he understood what his place was in the plan of God. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have